car on the roof that caused lots of problems. Although being only 60 square meters wide, it caused lots of damages underneath of the roof. Not only underneath, but also on the surrounding area, all the tiles are coming off. And we started this refurbishment by thinking that we shall just mend a little cut on the waterproofing and ended up by taking and stripping off all the layers all the way down to the structure. So we talk about flat roofs by knowing that there is no such thing as the flat roof. The flat roof actually means the roof with a very tiny and little inclination. On this roof, under we stripped all the layers down, we realized that the builders did make an uh, inclination which led to the water outlet. But as we can see here, the water outlet is higher than the lowest point of the roof. Because we had rain yesterday and before we stripped off the old waterproofing, we realized that the lowest point of the roof was not actually at the outlet, but here where I stand. And therefore, after applying the waterproofing, actually the con vapor control layer, we shall add some dry sand to make this whole surface even. When we come with the inclination boards, we shall make a nice, clean and very even and smooth inclination towards the water outlet. With those additional XPS boards, we shall overcome this height and secure the real and the good position for the new water outlet. The dusty surface was first treated with a bituminous emulsion. After drying out, we started a new phase of the refurbishment. This is the vapor controlling layer. Actually, this is the real vapor barrier with an aluminum foil on top of the bituminous, very thin layer. This membrane is self-adhesive. To improve the adhesion, we apply this layer before it. It hasn't dried out completely, but enough so we can continue. As we said, the initial problem here was the depression at the wrong place. So this was the lowest part of the roof, whereas the water outlet was good meter far from it. This is the reason why we put the sand to make it all nice and even before we apply the next layer of inclined XPS. Upon installing the six centimeter thick underlay to reach the height of the water outlet, we started installing the inclined boards to reach the final inclination before putting the bituminous membrane. Because we work with XPS, we have to go with a self-adhesive bituminous membrane. The second layer will be torched upon it. Here we are today again on our small roof in Sodrežica. So the next phase is to put the first layer of bituminous membrane, which is self-adhesive because it goes on top of XPS. The key of every good work is the precise installment. So tailoring before applying it and then carefully removing the foil that is protective to the self-adhesive membrane. The trick to good adhesion without folds is to carefully remove the protective foil. One of the reasons why we prefer the inverted roof is to reduce the difference in summer temperature to winter temperature on top of the waterproofing. The black waterproofing gets very, very hot in the summer. Here we are measuring at the moment what is the temperature of the surface of the waterproofing. It is rising over 50 Celsius degrees. If you imagine that in winter this temperature can go as low as to minus 20, so we've got very big difference in the temperature that causes premature aging of the membrane. After installing the waterproofing, we started adding the final layer of XPS. This system is called inverted roof because the thermal insulation comes on the top of the waterproofing. To ensure the water goes to the water outlet from the old levels, first we install the primary water outlet. 
Then there is a drainage ring that comes on the top of it. This ensures that any water that could come beyond and below the XPS port would still have the path to go to the, to the water outlet. In this system, because we are putting the green roof on top of it, we shall add one more layer called Fibran Skin Shell. This is the water reducing layer, which will be nicely sealed with this additional secondary water outlet. To prevent any debris coming to the water outlet, we shall use this ring. And this will be the final and finished multi-layer waterproofing. So this is how it is done, very simple. We cut XPS ports to the size and lay them loosely on the waterproofing. This is the inverted roof assembly. This is the preparation work before installing the water reducing layer that comes on top of XPS ports. This white sheet is a very thin polyethylene foil which is used as a water reducing layer. The overlaps are glued, not sealed, but glued enough so the membrane would not move and would prevent any water that might come underneath and cause the water going wrong way. After we fix the water reducing layer, we have to cut out the position for the sealing ring which will seal the water reducing layer on top of the additional part on top of the water outlet. The secondary outlet has got the clamping ring with the rubber that will stick together the water reducing layer to the secondary water outlet. The water reducing layer is a secondary membrane. It's not the real waterproofing but it proves that the water doesn't go to the unwanted layers. After completed the layers of the inverted roof, we started forming the final layers of our green roof. Because we shall have a part of the intensive and part of the extensive roof, we start using two different drainage accumulation layers. The white one consists of EPS and it contains approximately 10 to 11 liters per square meter. The black one is harder and contains more water, up to 18 liters per square meter, and it will be put down below the intensive greenery. Firstly drawn on the computer, this layout is now put in one-to-one -one scale onto the actual roof. My colleague is just cutting all the elements to the size to meet the different final layers of the green roof. Firstly, we shall show the pebbles representing non-walkable roof. We have a path that leads us to the water outlet for their maintenance, but also to make a nice pattern on the roof. The green part is covered by sedum species, which are easily in low maintenance plants. In the corner, we shall put some berberis plants, which will just raise up the whole story before ending it on the canopy of the roof. Although being very tiny, only 16 square meters, this roof consists of non-walkable area, walkable area and the green area. We put the drainage accumulation layer already in accordance to each part of the roof. Now we are putting the filter layer, layer, which will be laid between the substrate into which we shall plant the plants and the drainage accumulation layer. It filters the tiny particles so they would not get clogged and block the drainage that has to remain through the whole life of the green roof. So here we are in the middle of the green roof. Actually, in the middle of the work too. The pebbles we are putting here as the underlayer will form the path and the bags are containing the substrate. So a little bit of patience and the roof will be completed in no time. So 
in the meantime, the workers finished laying down the tiles, which make a neat covering for the waterproofing. Hopefully this roof will never ever leak again. The green roof remained as per our drawing with a little path that leads to the inspection chamber and in between the rand of the pebbles and this little path there will be an island made of soil a special substrate for the green roofs where we can plant whatever we wish later on here we are again putting soil and the pebbles divided by this filtering geotextile we call it Fibron SF32 and it's perfect for the durable and good quality drainage between the soil and the pebbles. This filtering geotextile will also help forming the edge between the two. In this phase we need both materials to keep the weight on each side so the geotextile will have support to form an even edge. So here we are at the final stage trimming the geotextile which serves as well as the drainage but also as a separation layer. When the soil is compacted, the pebbles compacted, we are forming the border and trimming off the geotextile which will not be needed in this upper area. Okay, I'm trying to be as neat as I can be but there are also some amendments after the plants are put into the place. So roughly we are finishing the edges and there will be a bit of compacting the soil before putting the plants. Soil is of a good content of moisture, just about right for planting. So the planting will take place even today. As you can see here on the design, we designed a path that leads us to the water outlet. The water outlet is set in the area where it is around, rounded with pebbles, but it also has got a inspection chamber, which serves for the cleaner and better and simpler cleaning the outlet. But we also have pebbles all around the roof. Why is that so? We need this area to be as well drained as possible. Why is that so? Because these are the most sensitive details of the waterproofing which sits right underneath. Don't ever forget we are on the roof. So the green roof, non-walkable, walkable, whatever kind of roof is first of all something that protects the underground rooms from moisture, from the weather, so the waterproofing has to be in a perfect shape. With this drainage passepartout around, we are actually providing additional security that the roof will function as it should. Sedum plants are easily planted and it is quite likely that this is going to be a successful extensive green roof. Some plants we brought fresh and some we saved from the old roof which we, remember, if you remember it, demolished, altered the waterproofing, put additional thermal insulation and put the totally new layers of the green roof. So the old plants are mixing here with the new plants and hopefully in a couple of weeks time they will be vivid, nice and colorful. As you can see, we have got grayish green, darkish reddish, whatever color you like and prefer. One thing is also important to say, if the plants are planted uh, in a higher density, then it is not so much likely that the weed will find place to get on and onto our garden. However, here we don't have the sedum carpet, which would be much easier and faster to install. But I'm putting the plants in some density of, let's say, 
approximately 16 to 20 plants per square meter, which is quite dense. And I hope that till the next springtime, this whole area will be fully covered with the plants.